Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Cornerstone Faith Community Church. We are so glad to be worshiping together with you this morning. As we enter into worship this morning, will you please stand and join in a responsive call to worship? God is in his holy temple. Let all his people sing his praise. We have come to sing the praises of our great God, for our God is great and greatly to be praised. He reigns over all, and above all, he is king over all. Psalm 20 and verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. We trust in the name of our great God. May we ever shout for joy, for he alone is our hope and our salvation. Let us bless the Lord, O people of God. It is truly good and right that we would at all times and in all places give thanks to God for he alone is worthy of all our hope, all our faith, and all our trust. Blessed be the Lord God, who was, who is, and is yet to come. Amen and amen.
Psalm 30, verse 9. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and my body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because I, I have, because of my affliction, and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbors and an object of dread to my closest friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear many whispering, terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant and save, and save me. In your unfailing love, let me not be put to shame, O Lord, for I have cried out to you. But let the wicked be put to shame and lie silent in the grave. Let their lying lips be silenced, from, for with pride and contempt they speak arrogantly against the righteous. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from all human intrigues. You keep them safe in your dwelling from accusing tongues. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed his wonderful love to me when I was in a besieged city. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard me, my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord, all his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Every single day, 
we have the joy of knowing that he will lead us along the way, right? So we should trust and we should obey every single day, yes? Let's sing about that. Father God, it is so good to be in your house this morning. It is so good to have heard the brethren call unto us. Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us give worship and praise and thanks to our God. For you, God, are greater than any. Far above all the kings and princes and rulers of any world. So, Father, it only makes sense that we would trust you, that we would obey every word of yours, that we would walk your way. But the truth is, Father, we so often choose our way. We so often think that our way is better, our way is easier. We know the path better. And so rather than submitting our ways to you, Father. We submit to ourselves. We submit to those around us and to the experts and to the people who have walked this path, thinking that we know better, they know better. We forget, Father, that you know best. So we begin this morning by asking for your forgiveness asking that you would draw us back home like wayward sheep, you would bring us back home. That we, Father, could be gathered into your fold again. 
that we could be prepared to hear once more. And most importantly, Father, that we could be prepared to trust and obey again. For, Father, there is no one else we would rather trust. There's no one else we would rather follow than you. So help us, we pray. By the power of your Holy Spirit, draw us back to you. We ask this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Well, good morning once again, and welcome to Cornerstone Faith Community Church. We are so glad that you could be gathered together with us this morning. Uh, If you are here for Sunday school, will you make your way to the back of the sanctuary, but give them one quick second. Kayliana, is it just Kayliana today? Oh my goodness. Have fun, (laughs) Kayliana. Let me uh, share just a few other uh, words of announcement with you all this morning. Um, Let me start by saying this. Yes, it's chilly in here. I'm very sorry, but uh, as as we shared with you in the beacon this week, and I will share with you once again, these are the toils of having an over 100 year old building that is uh, heated off of radiant hot water heat. The fact of the matter is that later this week, it's going to be back up in the mid-60s, and so it does not make sense for us to fire the boiler just yet. Um, Once we do, um, we're looking at heating bills of around $1,000 a month. So we, we postpone as long as we possibly can. So thank you to those of you who I know are always cold and, and, and heeded my words of warning and dressed appropriately. Um, I would say the next couple of weeks, please plan to do the same. Um, we will not let you freeze, I promise. If it gets to that point, we will fire the thing up. Um, but we're just trying to be faithful stewards of all that we have been given. Um, and we're trying to postpone those high bills as long as possible. So thank you for your understanding in that. Um, um, other announcements this morning. Our Saturday morning uh, Bible, uh, Bible study and breakfast takes place this coming Saturday, Saturday, October 12th. Um, it is going to begin at 8th, 14th. Why did I say 12th? I don't know. <laughs> Just happens sometimes. Uh, Saturday, October 14th, it begins at 8.30 a.m. in the Beacon Room. What now? Okay. Um, Begins at 8.30 a.m. in the Beacon Room. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you're having for breakfast. It's a surprise, um, but it will be fantastic, and we would love for you to come and join us. Uh, Don't forget that, um, unfortunately, I have to be out of town, but Sandy is going to lead study for us, uh, which is going to be a fantastic study. She has a really uh, fantastic plan for you guys, so please, you will want to be there. It starts at 8.30. We'll wrap up approximately 10.15, 10.30, um, and we just hope that you will come and join us. Uh, Get your Saturday morning off to a great start. Uh, This is our second one for the fall. We have a third one that will take place in November, and then we'll have have them again in February, March, and April. So please plan to join us for that this coming Saturday morning. Also, uh, a week from that, on Saturday, October 21st, is our bonfire night. It, um, I know it's a ways out, but the weather, it looks like it's going to be fantastic um, for the bonfire. We have a plan to have dinner for you, hot dogs, hamburgers, brats, potato salad, chips. Um, we're going to have a s'mores bar for you. You can uh, have lots of di- s'mores made lots of different ways. Um, we will have beverages for you. All you have to do is bring your chair um, or a blanket if you're one of those crazy people that likes to sit on the ground. Um, and 
be prepared for fellowship. It's going to be a very fun evening. Um, we will start at 6 p.m. Um, you are welcome to stay as long as you'd like. Uh, at some point, I will put the fire out and go to bed, but I suppose you can stay there um, as long as you'd like. It'll be a very fun night. Please plan to join us. Um, there is no cost to you for this event, so that is a very fun uh, evening uh, of entertainment and fellowship. Um, please plan to join us. Also, don't forget that uh, Truck or Treat is quickly coming up at the end of the month. That takes place uh, in Roselle at the American Legion. Um, no, yes, American Legion. I always See, I got it right this time, Joyce. At the American Legion Hall um, at Irving Park Road and Maple um, on October 28th. Um, we have, you guys have been so generous. Thank you for the candy donations that have already come in and also the cash donations that have come in. Uh, we are going to be well stocked with candy. That's fantastic. Uh, I know a couple of people said, wow, there's a lot of candy there. Yes, but we also, don't forget, have to make little baggies of candy for 1,500 kids. So that's a lot of little baggies. So thank you for your generosity. Um, it's going to be a very fun day and we'll make sure that we share pictures with you uh, of that event. It is really an awesome opportunity for us to, um, to meet 1,500 families in our community. And so please, if you would, be praying for that event um, and for our um, witness to the gospel that will take place there. We believe in mustard seeds, and we think that even uh, in very small ways, maybe just in handing out a little bag of candy, um, God can use these moments. And so thank you for your generosity and for your prayers for that event. It will be, I think, a very fun opportunity for us. Uh, last thing we want to share with you is a reminder about the barbecue dinner that's coming up uh, November 11th. Yes, it is Veterans Day. We understand that. Um, but we think it's a great way to celebrate veterans. And we will be celebrating them in certain ways during the event with some decorations and that kind of stuff. Um, but the tickets are on sale uh, for the dinner. Um, you can get those um, today after worship in the Welcome Center. There's a table there. Um, you can get them anytime between now and the time of the uh, dinner. Um, don't forget, there are also some envelope packets that have tickets. There are 10 adult tickets and five child tickets in each packet. Uh, if you would have any interest in taking a packet of tickets and trying to sell them, for example, at work or to people in your neighborhood, we would be so appreciative of that. Remember, this event really only um, is as successful as the number of tickets that we can sell. So if you would be w willing to take a packet, um, please see who's ever going to be seated. Joyce is going to be seated at the table today. Please see Joyce after worship today and uh, grab a packet of tickets or get your tickets for your family. Um, it will be a very fun evening uh, of great food. Don't forget this year we are adding a... Um, family fun fest to this event. There's going to be games for the kids. We'll, of course, have our uh, annual cakewalk. Um, there's going to be face painting. Uh, Megan Letts is going to be back to face paint for us. Um, so it is going to be a very fun evening uh, for kids and families and everyone of every age. Please plan to join us. Uh, get your tickets, and it would be super helpful if you took a packet of tickets and tried to sell them for us. So check those out this morning as well. Anything else this morning, Jeannie? Did I want to talk about Best of Bloomingdale? <laughs> I suppose so. Um, clearly, since I'm not up here jumping and shouting, uh, we were not chosen as the Best of Bloomingdale. Um, however, <laughs> um, it was still a great opportunity for us to get our name into the community. We got great publicity. Um, the races were very close. Uh, the reality of the measure is that um, St. Isidore's um, won, um, you know, and it is uh, a fantastic congregation here in town. Um, and, and the reality is that they're about, what, 10 times our size. So um, you've got a lot more people voting. Um, the great thing is that the event was changed a little bit this year. So the public vote isn't 100% of the deal. That counts for 60% of it, and then there's 40% of it that there's a panel of people that judge. Um, and so the reality is, is it's not futile for us to participate in this. We could at some point 
um, obviously be chosen. Um, the, bef- before we went into this, someone asked me, do we really care if people think we're the best or not? And at the end of the day, that's not why we do it. The reason we do it is because we hope that this will maybe encourage someone um, to come and visit with us, and we may have the opportunity to share the gospel with someone that we might not otherwise have the opportunity to share the gospel with. That's the heart of why we do it. In fact, in the little program that was on the table for everyone, and there were, they said, right, over 300 people, I think, or something there that night. Um, in that program, you know, we, we got to have a little piece about us, and it says very clearly, everything we do, whether it's bringing ice cream into the community for an event or, you know, serving in some other way or our worship service, whatever. Like our primary goal is to share the gospel. We do everything with the heart of sharing the gospel. And so same thing with that. Uh, you know, our purpose was to find ways to share the gospel. And I think that we did that. I think by our presence there, people know that we were there because we're a church and we're looking for opportunities to share the gospel. So it was definitely not a lost cause. It was a very fun evening, and people certainly know that we're here. Um, and that's a great thing. Um, last week in my message, remember I said when I first came here, there was this joke about this place was Bloomingdale's best kept secret. I don't think that's true anymore. Um, and that's fantastic news. So um, that's what I'll say about Best of Bloomingdale. Next year, right? We're just like the Chicago Bears. There's always next year. <coughs> so. <clears throat> on the back of your um, bulletins, you will find our uh, prayer list around the front. Um, we do ask that you would keep those folks <clears throat> in your prayers this week. Um, keep that list in a place where you'll see it um, every day throughout the week. We thank you for the, your prayers on behalf of uh, those folks. We do know and believe and trust that God hears our prayers. Um, That is evident because there are prayers on there of uh, restoration of healing. And we can look around our sanctuary and see that. And so thank you for your prayers. Um, But would you just join me in a general word of prayer this morning for those things. Let's pray together. Father God, we do give you thanks and praise this morning. We give you thanks that we have this place to come to, that we have this family to worship with. We give you thanks and praise that we have you, Father God, and the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, that we even have a reason to gather here this morning. Father, we give you thanks and praise that you have drawn us from the places and the spaces, from the situations, perhaps from the trials and the tribulations, from the struggles of this life. And you've gathered us once again in your house. Father, we give you thanks that you have brought us here, sometimes even amidst great joy and celebration. We get to share those things together as the family of God. We have so much to be thankful for, Father. So much that you have provided for us, you and you alone. And so we begin this morning by giving you all praise and thanks. For you alone are worthy. You alone, Father, are worthy of all of our praise. Father, we, your people, come and we bow our knees before you. We come, as the writer of Hebrews said, with confidence before the throne of our great God, knowing that when we pray, you hear us. As we humble our hearts before you, we ask, Father, that you would look on those who are sick, that you would look on those who have had surgery, who are about to have surgery, that you would look on those who have a diagnosis of an illness, maybe perhaps like cancer or some chronic disease. Father, that you would be 
caring for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, those who are learning to live life a new and different way because they've lost a spouse. Father, we ask that you would be looking on those whose relationships are struggling. Maybe those relationships are marriages, Father, or maybe they are friendships, family relationships. Father, we lift to you all those who are in need. It may be those who are in need of shelter, clothing, food. And Father, we ask that you would show them to us that we might be able to share from our abundance with them. For you, Father, are Jehovah Jireh, God, our provider. You provide in every single way. And all that you ask of us in return is that we would share. That the gift would go on. So Father, provide us the opportunity to share. Help us to be faithful stewards of all that you have given to us. Father, we thank you for this place that you've called Cornerstone Faith Community Church. For all who worship and gather here. We thank you, Father, for those who have not yet walked through these doors. We pray that you would begin preparing us even now to receive them. That they might hear the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask now once again, as we turn our hearts to your word, that you would give us the wisdom and the discernment of your Holy Spirit in this place. That as we hear your word, it would fall fresh on our hearts and in our lives and in our minds. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, as we come to be under the word of God, would you please stand this morning for the reading of God's word? That as we hear God's word, it would fall fresh on our hearts. We would give it its fullest authority in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives. This morning, we continue our look at how it is not easy being a Christian. This morning, Proverbs chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word for this day. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, brothers and sisters, uh, a young woman was called out of town for work recently, and she was forced to spend an entire week away from her children and her husband. Now, in order to hopefully help her with her homesickness, every evening she called her husband, and she made sure that she had an opportunity to speak with each and every one of her children. Well, one night while she was on the phone with her husband, an interesting conversation took place between the two of them. The wife recalled, she said, my my husband said that he had stopped at the store after he picked up the children from school. And on their way into the store, he happened across a fairly large amount of change in a bucket, which someone had apparently just left behind. So I asked my husband, well, what did you do with it? He replied that he picked it up and he took it to the customer service desk to inquire if anyone had reported it missing. Now they were just as surprised as he was and they said that no one had reported such a missing item. Well, well, then what did you do, the wife asked him. Well, I I stood around for a little while, the husband said, trying to see if anybody came back looking for it, but nobody came back looking for it. So I just took it. Well, the wife was in complete shock. Do you really think that was a good idea to just take it? I mean, how, how much are we talking here? Quite a lot, the husband said. I mean, it was an entire bucket full. Do you, do you really think that was wise, the wife asked? I mean, you had the children with you. What did the children say? Weren't they concerned that you were taking something that didn't belong to you? No, not really, the husband replied. They were just really curious what I planned to do with all of it. Well, how long do you suppose it will take you to count all of that? The wife asked. And you see, that's where the conversation became hilarious. Because you see, the husband hadn't found a bucket of change. 
he had found a large bucket of chains. The entire conversation had been the result of a simple misunderstanding. Sometimes we are placed into situations where one simple truth becomes all too clear to us. The extent of our human understanding is absolutely limited, isn't it? I mean, sure, maybe the wife had a bad connection on the phone or the husband, maybe he was speaking softly. But the the simple fact is that she did not correctly understand he If you've ever been married, if you've been married for any length of time, you'll likely agree that this phenomenon happens more and more frequently as your marriage goes on, does it not? But it is not merely a matter of troubled hearing or as wives like to call it, selective hearing. It is proof that human understanding simply has its limitations. For example... Did you know this? Did you know that as of January 2023, there were over 8 billion people, 8 billion people living in our world? But study after study after study has proven that even the most well-developed of human minds only has the capacity to actually know and interact with approximately 600 of those people in a given lifetime. 600 out of 8 billion. Now, that doesn't mean that you will only come into contact with or only have some sort of dealing with only 600 people in your lifetime. But what it means is that the maximum number of people that that any human mind can actually physically account for, physically, personally relate to, is about 600 people over a single lifetime. In other words, our human minds only have the capacity to, to truly know And to truly understand less than one one thousandth of a percent of the world's population. By the way, did you also know that study after study has shown that human understanding is limited in this way? Did you know that we only remember 80% of the things that we see in our lifetime? Did you also know that we only remember 20% of the things we read in our lifetime? And did you know that we only remember 10% of the things that we hear in our lifetime? That is not an encouraging statistic as a pastor, I have to tell you. (laughs) You you guys are only really... remembering 10% of the things I say to you. The reason for this phenomenon is something called visual processing cues. In other words, when we have something for our eyes to focus on and our brains are engaged in a different way, we remember what we're hearing and we experience it better. Thus, slides, by the way. But even with those visual processing cues, our human understanding is limited to only 80% at very best. Now, you're you're sitting out there going, okay, pastor, we get it. Our feeble little human minds are limited in their ability to understand. What is your point this morning? Well, that's actually the entire point. So often, our um, over-eager human mindset believes that we have the ability to do what only God can actually do what only God can actually accomplish for us. We become susceptible to the idea that we are strong enough, we are wise enough, we are good enough, we are whatever the conversation or the situation calls for enough. And the next thing we know, we have all but forgotten about the limitations of our human capacity. That's exactly what we're hearing about this morning as we find ourselves among the sayings of the great King Solomon the Wise in Proverbs chapter 3. This is probably one of the most often recited passages of the Old Testament. I'll bet that all it takes is for someone to start these verses and most of you can finish them because of vacation Bible school, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. 
In this one proverb, we find a cause and effect scenario in which the first three lines are the cause and the final line is the effect. If you will trust in the Lord with all your heart, if you will lean on him, if you will not lean into your own understanding, if you will acknowledge him in all of your ways, that's the cause. What's the effect? then he shall direct your paths. Pastor Tony Evans, he says, a person who is serious about fulfilling his purpose will learn to view all of his life through God's grid of intentions. The grid of God's intention. What, what is the grid of God's intention? When I think of a grid in this sense, I think maybe of a map or, or a plotting diagram, if you will. So, so maybe God's intention grid looks something like this. And, and maybe the first stop is Micah, right? He has shown thee, O oh man, what is good, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God, right? And maybe step two of this grid of intention. God has this intention for you to have a self-denial, to deny yourself, Jesus says, and take up your cross and follow him. Self-denial, Christ exaltation. Deny yourself, take up your cross, the cross of Christ, and follow him to glorify God, right? And maybe step three, Love, honor, pray, worship. If you were to take Jesus' Sermon on the Mount and boil it down to four words, you get love, honor, pray, and worship. And maybe step four is, oh, you guys ever hear those words before? No, God, trust, trust Christ, serve others. No, serve, grow. You ever hear those words before? Mission statement, yeah, of Cornerstone Faith Community Church. Maybe those are God's intentions. Maybe that's the grid. What Pastor Tony Evans is really getting at in his comment about those who really want to know their purpose in life, viewing life through his, his grid work is this. When we only view our purpose through our limited human ability to understand, we really have no choice but to find ourselves focused on those things which only greatly benefit us. Not God's kingdom, not God's people. And that's not always just a matter of greed or egotistical pride. Sometimes it's just the result of us leaning on our own limited, short-sighted understanding instead of God's perfect understanding. But, but still, if, if it is the case that we can so easily become so self-absorbed, so short-sighted because of our, our limited understanding, then we have to ask ourselves this next question. What does it actually take for us to find ourselves what does it take for us to find ourselves in a place where we are not leaning on our own understanding? Proverbs 3 says it's best. It says, lean not. But what does that mean? What does it actually look like? What does it look like to lean on God's understanding instead of your own understanding? What does it look like to acknowledge God first in all of your ways in order that he might direct every single one of your paths? Well, it should come as no surprise to you because the title of this message series, after all, is It's Not Easy Being a Christian, that it is not easy to find yourself leaning entirely only on God's understanding rather than your own. But it is entirely possible. Remember last week I said that loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, it's not easy either. But it is entirely worth the struggle. Same thing for this. So let me offer you quickly this morning three ways that we, I think, choose our own understanding instead of God's perfect understanding so that we can know not to do those things and then 
find ourselves in God's perfect understanding. The first way that we choose our own understanding instead of God's is this. We carry God's word around, but we fail to etch it into our hearts. We carry God's word around with us, but we fail to etch it into our hearts. Do you remember that husband and wife that we were talking about just a moment ago, the wife that misunderstood chains for change? Some might say she just wasn't using her ears well enough, right, teachers? When our mouths are open, our ears are closed. I once heard a wise man say that the greatest travesty on earth is that God gave us all two ears to lug around every day, but so often we can't be bothered to use them. That's a harsh but true reality, isn't it? Here's another harsh but true reality. God gave us his word, beautifully pieced together, neatly bound in this book that we call the Holy Bible, and yet so many of us lug it around with us every single day. But the real question is this, how many of us are actually putting it into use? Look at how Solomon opened chapter three of Proverbs. He said, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. It is true that in this particular case, Solomon is speaking... He's speaking to his son, probably Rehoboam. Now, Rehoboam will ultimately not listen to his father's words. He will be remembered down through history as one of Israel's worst and most destructive kings. Yet it is also true that these proverbs, these sayings of wisdom are attributed to Solomon, but they were a gift from God. Solomon prayed for wisdom and God granted him that wisdom. Solomon spoke this wisdom because God gave it to him. It was God's wisdom. It was written down for all of God's people. And so as such, the words of Solomon's wisdom are included in scripture because they are not actually Solomon's words of wisdom. They are God's. God was speaking them through Solomon to all of his people, including you and me. So when we read these first four verses, we have to read them as if God is speaking to you and I. We are that son. We cannot forget the teaching. We have to keep the commands etched in our hearts. We have to write them, etch them on the tablets. When I think of that tablet, I think of stone. How does anything get written in a stone? You have to actually etch it in there. A, a moment ago, I shared with you that when the eyes are engaged in visual cues, the human mind is able to remember maybe as much as 70% more information as compared to when simply listening alone. Did you know that when it comes to taking notes, there were studies completed as recently as just two years ago that prove that the human mind can recall exponentially more details when the brain, the eye, and the hand are all engaged together at the same time. In other words, if you really want to remember something, the best way to commit it to memory is write it down. The actual act of writing something down aids in cementing that thing to your brain. Because of all of this, even though one school district in Florida provided a brand new laptop for every student in the school district last year, as well as a digital textbook for every student, for every class, one particular history teacher still required his students to bring a notebook and pen to class every single day to take notes. As it turned out, The students in that class, on average, scored 50% higher than did the students in the other history class where handwritten notes were not required. Which means this. In order for what we learn to make a difference to us, it in some way has to be etched into us. 
It has to be etched into us. That's obvious and true when it comes to learning history. It's definitely true when it comes to trusting God. What God does, what God does for us, does he want us to just know that? Or does he want that to become part of us? Does he merely want us to possess his word or does he want us to live his word? You see, Israel has possessed God's word nearly since the beginning of this world and yet they have turned from it at every single opportunity that's been presented to them. You see, simply carrying God's word around with us has no impact on our hearts. We must actually open up that word and etch it onto our hearts. We've got to know his word. We've got to feed on his word. We've got to wrestle with his word when it challenges our hearts. And yes, when the world rejects his word, we've got to stand firm in his word. It has got to be our lifeblood. Not just another book on our shelf. The second way that we choose our own understanding instead of God's perfect understanding and intention for us is this. We expect God to guide our paths when we have not submitted our ways to him. We expect God to guide our paths when we have not submitted our ways to him. Verses five through six of our text says that, well, this is the part that everybody can probably recite, right? It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all of your ways submit or acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Did you notice we have that tricky little three-letter word again there? All. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not just part of it, all of it. Submit all of your ways to him. Not just some of them, all of them. Here's the problem with our limited human understanding. We set expectations for God that we have no business setting for him because we have perceived, and I'm going to say wrongly understood, that, well, that's, that's how God works, right? That's what he does, right? Let me illustrate this for you. People say this all the time, don't they? God won't let a good person die. God won't let a good person die. My answer to that is wrong. Good people die all the time. We don't know his reasoning for that. I'd be willing to bet we're not capable of understanding his reasoning for that. But the truth of the matter is that good people die all the time, every single day. People also say this, don't they? They say, well, give it to God in prayer and he'll give you the desire of your heart. Well, not only is this a gross misunderstanding of scripture, it's a gross misunderstanding of who God is. Yes, these people are right in one sense. God wants to bless you and he wants you to come to him in prayer. And in a certain extent, they are also right that he wants to bless you with the things that you would like to have. But where they've gone awry in their understanding is that whatever you desire is what God desires for you. Well, it could be the case if it fits with his will. But if it doesn't, if it's not good for you, he's not going to bless you with it. So this is where... The world says, if God really loved you, he'd give you what you ask of him. No. No, because you see, it's because God really loves me that he protects me from my foolish, self-serving, harmful things that my heart sets its desire on and he only gives me the things that actually make me stronger the things that actually set me on his kingdom purposes everything else if i'm gonna get it i have to scheme for it and god is not a schemer So if we go back to Proverbs 3, it says, in all of your ways acknowledge him. 
Submit all of your ways to him and he will direct all of your paths. All of them. Why should we do that? Now you might be offended by this, but this is the truth. Because you have no idea. You have no idea what is best for you. You have no idea what is best for you. God does. He has promised he will show it to you every single step of the way. But I also want you to notice something. It does not say there, and he will control your paths. It does not say he will control. There is a process. First you submit to your him, your path, and then he guides it. By expecting him to show you every single step when you have not submitted your path to him, that is foolishness. He is not some chess master with the great chess board of the world, and you are not some pawn that he is just waiting to move in the great game of chess we call life. You must submit your way. And then he will direct your path. The third way that we focus more on our own understanding and overlook God's perfect intention for us. We find wisdom in what we can already see rather than what God is still unfolding before us. We find wisdom in what God can, in what we can already see, rather than what God is still unfolding before us. Perhaps of all of the ways that the limitations of our human understanding shows itself in this world, the greatest of them is the fear of the unknown, right? As a human race, we are prone to worry and to anxiety. At the end of the day, that worry and anxiety is nothing more than a fear of that which has not yet come to be. A fear of that which we cannot yet see. And the reason we fear that is because that means if we cannot yet see it, we cannot yet control it. So to battle that anxiety and that worry about what might yet be, we take our greatest comfort in what already is the things that have already come to be. We rest securely on the things we can already see, what we already know. For if we can already see it, then we can already predict it, and at the very least, we can minimize whatever pain it might bring upon us because we already know what's going to happen. But what about that which is still unfolding? What about that which we have not yet seen? What about that over which we have no control? We have no idea what to expect, and so therefore we fear it. Here's a truth about God. He has already given us the wealth of his word, right? Would you not agree with me that this book is complete, start to finish? I mean, it ends the book of Revelation saying, anyone who adds to or subtracts from this scroll... Right? It will be added to or subtracted from him. So it is done. Finito. However, that does not mean that God is not still working for us. He is still unfolding your path. He is still making a way for you on this winding foreign road that you call life. We are always taking new steps. Therefore, God always has a reason to be working for you. Anybody ever have a toddler learning to walk? (laughs) You remember those first steps, right? They're fantastic, right? And and eventually they become real solid. And you're like, great, they're walker. You you, you no longer have a a toddler. You know, a toddler means that they're still kind of (laughs) like, but now you have a walker. They They can walk. How, how, how long does it take before, as a parent, you, you're really confidently never actually maybe reaching for their hand or, or, or thinking they're going to fall? I remember, I think my son was probably three. Because even though he could walk, I was still afraid he would stumble. Because the path was still unfolding. There were a lot of steps he had never taken before.
Listen, we like to dwell in what already has been. We like to dwell in what has already taken place. We find our wisdom in what we've already done, what we already know. And so Solomon said, listen, we so often find wisdom in our own eyes rather than in the fear of the Lord. We can find wisdom in our own eyes because we feel like we can trust what we know because we've already seen it. And we feel like we can trust that better than God because we've already seen it. But that is not trusting God. That is not trusting God with all of our hearts. That's trusting God and saying, I'll trust you so long as you don't make me take a step I haven't taken yet, God. That is not leaning on God's understanding. That is leaning on your understanding. That is wisdom that your eyes can see, not what God's eyes can see. But God's word calls us to something so much better than simply leaning on our own understanding or what our own eyes can see. God has called us into his presence, into his life, into his family, into his will. And so when we walk in his presence and we enjoy his life for us, then we thrive as his family because we seek his will first. But that is not easy, is it? In fact, that's so much harder than just doing whatever our eyes see, whatever we know and trust, whatever we're comfortable with. That's why the Hebrew text is important here. You thought you were going to get out of here without some Hebrew this morning, didn't you? That's why the Hebrew text is important this morning because Proverbs 3 uses a special word to translate that everyday common English word, trust. The Hebrew word is Bata'ak. Bata'ak is the Hebrew word for trust, which means to lie down with all of your weight. To lie down with all of your weight. For example, it says, the Hebrew word means to lie down with all of your weight as if an elephant might lie down upon a bed of straw. Did you catch that? As if an elephant might lie down upon a bed of straw. Or as if a tree limb might fall down upon the ground after breaking free from a tree trunk. Bata'ak means to so trust God, to guide your steps and to make straight paths for you, that you literally lean into him with his understanding, with all of your weight. It definitely isn't easy But trusting God requires that we lean into him with all of our weight. All of it. Listen, folks, I trust this pulpit is not going to move. I can push hard against this thing. It's not moving. When was the last time You leaned that hard into God. When was the last time you took every ounce of who you are and trusted God with it? Every last bit of it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him He shall direct your paths. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this challenge this morning. We pray that we would have the Willingness of heart to bata'ach, to trust you with all of our weight, to lean entirely into you, Father. Father. 
to lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge you, that you might direct our paths. For Father, our understanding is so limited and weak. But your understanding for us is so perfect. Father, we know that this challenge is not easy. And so we come to you asking for your help. Asking for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to guide us and sustain us. That it might call us by name and draw us back when we forget. We walk away from you and we lean on our own understanding and we trust what we can see rather than what you have yet unfolded before us. Father, we do want to trust you fully with every ounce of our being. And so we ask you for your help. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. reason we trust God is because he's faithful, right? So let's stand and sing about his faithfulness.
Brothers and sisters, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. Go with the love of God our Father, the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, and the power and presence of the Holy Spirit to be yours this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures. Have a wonderful week, everybody. We'll see you next week.